It's the Robin Orion Show, Friday morning. Thanks for joining me. My guest today for the full episode is flat earth expert, educator, app developer, and media personality. His app for iOS and Android, Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app has been downloaded in massive numbers all over the world. His YouTube channel, D-I-T-R-H, has over 7 million views, and you can find links to that from flatearthdave.com. He's appeared on Talk is Jericho, the InfoWars Network, and the Anthony Cumia Show. You're not a real broadcaster until you interview this man. Known around or across the earth, that's what we're going to find out today. David Weiss joins me. David, how are you? I'm doing great. That was some introduction. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. It was nice. Well, it's well deserved. I mean, <laughs> you are the definitive flat earth mind. Is that right? No, untrue, untrue. I am the loudest mouth that goes on the most number of shows. I'm the one that has dedicated his life to getting on as many shows to talk to people like you. There's other flat earthers, honestly, that know more than I do, but they're not available. They're not, uh, they're not willing to do this. Um, I do know a lot. You can consider me in the top percentile. I don't know what that is. There's other people, though, that have different fields of expertise, like my friend Zach from Good Times From All channel. He's the expert on, um, on uh, magnetism and electricity and gravity. His stuff is amazing, but we all share information, and we're out here just trying to spread it to people that think Flat Earth is stupid. So before we get into the what, the why, the how, I, I need to get into the who. That's what any good journalist would do, right, is answer those five big questions. And I really think there's two who's in this story. There's got to be a bad guy and there's got to be a good guy. And for the sake of the narrative, you're the good guy here. Flat Earth Dave, did you give yourself that nickname? Where did that come from? It's pretty funny. Um, it just kind of stuck. Somebody said it and then it, it, and it, and it stuck. So that's, uh, that's where it came from. And I was like, you know what? It's easy to remember. Hey, what's the name of your app? The Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Nobody can get it right. Like, I have my best friends still get it wrong. And it's uh. a really long, convoluted name. But I did it for a reason. Because if you search Flat Earth in the app store, boom, it's number one. Flat E. Bam. There I am. There you Android, go. Android store, that's something else. But um, everything. And then I said, you know what? Flat Earth Dave. Everybody calls me it. Why don't I just point my website there? And or point that to my website, flatearthdave.com. It actually brings you to the Flat Earth Podcast.com. Yeah. Same thing, flatearthdave.com. All the links are there. Any relation to my washed up supermodel friend, flat chested Danielle? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough, Dave. Now, I, a... I, I do, I am not a, just a flat guy. I do like curves. I do oh, okay. like curves. <laughs> I do good. like curves. I mean, honestly. <laughs> now, your professional background, I know you come from the solar industry, so you have a good understanding of how the world seems to work, right? You know, what's funny about the solar industry. Scientists don't know how solar panels work. They don't oh, know. Come on, Dave. No, no. You look it up. It's a theory. They're like, well, you know, this, this electron, uh, this uh, photon that was born in the middle of the sun a billion years ago, it takes a billion years to come to the surface. Then it takes eight minutes to get to Earth. And then it knocks an electron out of this uh, chip, this um um, silicon chip, and then an electron fills it in and it creates a current. That's nonsense. They believe in this distant sun when the truth is our sun is electric. It's right here. It's like a Tesla coil. It's sending electricity and all those things are doing is gathering electricity. But it's for very there, simple. But for there to be patents on photovoltaic technology, oh, no, no, it has to be a little more than a theory, right? No, there's patents. I don't know where this technology came from. I think it came from uh, a, a civilization before us, not an alien civilization. Oh, okay. There, there, was, uh, there was an advanced civilization here in the 1800s. Uh, we can get into that a little bit later. But, we'll have to. But um, scientists, it's a theory on how it works. They don't know how it works because... They don't know that our sun is close and it's electric. You put um, you get two house plants, put one of them in front of a fireplace and one of them in front of uh, an array of lights. One of them's going to grow. The other one's going to shrivel up and die. I, I mean, I can't argue with that too much. Yeah. Well, so you, you were in the solar sales industry. Are you, did you go to college, mm -hmm. Dave? Sure. I went to, I went to business school and I, I mean, it's a regular college, but business degree. Yeah. Um, I worked in corporate America. I started a commercial solar division at this big company. They sold off the company. The company that bought them shut down the commercial division. I started my own. I was like, oh my God, this is the worst thing ever. And the next day I'm like, no, this is the best thing ever. Started my own company, better design than the original company I worked at. 
And uh, we're having a great time. We're a solar development company. We weren't just selling residential solar. We were selling right. uh, financing, constructing uh, large commercial systems. And there's a lot of design that goes into that. So you're, you're not just going to someone's house and selling something. You're designing these systems, a lot of technical expertise is involved. Yes? Yeah. I mean, I don't do the engineering, of course. Right. I, I hire engineers, uh, but I do know a lot about the topic. I know, you know more than your average Joe, that's for sure. Certainly. And this, what you're doing now, I want to be clear, is a full-time job, right? Well, you know what? I didn't do it for the money. I did it because I want a future for my children. We're going to get into the why. Why the right. hell does friggin' flat earth matter with all the crap that's going on in the world? You know, I don't know what your view is on what's going on in the world, but it's pretty much gone to fucking hell. Yeah. And, and, and um, I want a future for my kids. And, and you know, how does flat earth bring a future for your kids? It's because once you, once you understand what this world is and once you see it, you see, you see everything and you literally dis, uh, unplug from what I call the matrix. And the matrix is the heliocentric system. It's a prison for your mind, right? If you're in the matrix, you believe you're on a spinning ball. You believe you're flying through an infinite, you know, uh, universe in a space vacuum, twirling and whirling out of control, um, you know, spinning at a thousand miles an hour, orbiting at 66,000 miles an hour, chases sun at a half a million miles an hour, but nothing ever moves. You know, you go out tonight, look at the stars next year, same night, same time, same stars, same position. Before okay. we get too much further into that, I think in we need to insanity. address who the bad guy is in this. So for the sake of the story, you're the good guy. Who's the bad guy? Who's behind the globe? How do we take him down? Well, the bad guys that we know are the people that are right in front of our faces. And most people have no idea what they are. The United Nations. Ooh, that sounds good. Uniting Nations. Most, one of the most evil you know, places on Earth or, or groups on Earth. The Bilderberg Group, the Club of Rome, um, you know, the Trilateral Commission. This is all the people that run the world, right? All, there, it's a, it's a corp, corpata, corptocracy. Is that the word? Uh, I'll, I'll, more I'll or less. It out. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's unelected people that are making the decisions. These corporations are running our world. If you look into BlackRock, BlackRock owns the whole world. BlackRock owns everything, right? Yeah, They're right. not elected. Right. And, and, and once you start looking into that and seeing, you know, how, how it's all run from the top down, um, then you start seeing like, wow, we are literally in a prison. We're in a prison and we're working for fake money. And, um, you know, we have a belief system that people have power over us and that's how they have power over us because it's in our imagination. Whatever you imagine to be true in your life becomes true in your life. But why would they propagate this globe conspiracy? What's the incentive for them to say that a globe exists? The incentive is if you see where you live, if you understand that you're not a random speck flying through an infinite universe, that you're, that an asteroid's not going to take us out, that, uh, we're not running out of water. We're not running out of dinosaur juice. Okay, ridiculous. That nuclear right. bombs aren't going to blow us up. That um, that you know, there's a food shortage. There's a pop overpopulation. All of that is complete and total nonsense. If you understand that we're actually at the center of creation, everything in the sky is within the Earth system. It's all alive. Okay, you know, you've heard the Gaia theory that the Earth is alive. Earth is alive, and all of those lights we see in the sky are alive. They're part of the system. And when you understand that we are here at the center of creation um, and that we have amazing uh, manifestation powers, they don't want you to know that. If you're living in fear and they steer your mind with the news, North, yeah. East, West, South, it's an acronym. Okay? <laughs> They're steering your mind. That. It's absolutely true. And then, and then people are like, well, what difference does it make? I still have to go to work. You know what? I don't have to go to work. Okay. This is my work. I'm talking to cool guys like you um, and a bunch of assholes sometimes, but right, I like, right. I like talking to them and uh, people are waking up and it's really fulfilling. And again, I walked away from more money than I ever thought I could make in my life, which I was making. And I walked away to just cover my bills. Cause like, Hey, you know what? The app sales just covered my bills. If I do it full time and maybe I can make a little more, and that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because this is the most important message out there. I used to wake people up to many conspiracies or, you know, they're not, you know, the difference between a conspiracy and a fact. Well, a fact is proven. Well, about a year, but now it's like more like six months. Well, for sure. Okay? Yeah. That's, okay. That's the difference. And here's the thing. I've been doing this for 15, 20 years. Every single thing that I predicted that I've been screaming about has come true, but nobody fucking cares. OK, nobody freaking cares. So my track record, I know what it is. And um, it's all it's all come true. Maybe I manifested it. I don't know, because I'm focusing on it. Who, who the hell knows? But I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best to wake up people and 
the amount of, you know, the, the amount of emails and letters and, and uh, messages I get saying, Dave, you changed my life. I thought you were stupid. I trolled you at first. And now I see it. My, my whole life has changed. I'm, I'm homesteading. I got married. I stopped this. I stopped drinking. All, all of these messages, tons and tons and tons of them. Right. Not that I'm against drinking, by the way. Right. right? Sure. You, you, you're free to, to, to do whatever you want with your life. Right. Just don't lose control of your soul. Exactly. That, that's, yeah. the main, that's the main mission. Well, speaking of losing control. So we have a good guy. We have a bad guy. You have all this information that you've uncovered that we're going to get to in a moment. How come they haven't taken me out? That's your next That's question, right? Of course. Do you, <laughs> how do you not live in constant paranoia and fear? You'd hear a tree <laughs> rustle outside your house. You know, there's no friggin' new questions. There's really no new questions. You know, this is Flat Earth 101. Um, and, and this is something that's harder to prove. I don't believe the, the, the reason the elite don't do whatever they want is because they have to abide by free will, natural law. There's very few laws. You know, there, we have millions of laws, you know, you, you study it forever and you still get it wrong. The law is don't kill anybody, mind your own damn business and help your neighbor. Those are the three laws basically. Okay. And well, maintain control of your soul. So the elite are afraid of karma. If you kill somebody, that karma is what they're afraid of. They're afraid of what happens to their soul, their, their, their life. And they don't kill people. They convince people to kill people. If I convince you right now to go kill your next door neighbor, that's on you, not on me. Okay? That's a fact. So um, that well, at least that's how they look at it. This is a spiritual war that we're in. And they, whether you believe it or not, they believe it. Okay. So so what so you know, it's funny that I'm saying this because what before I got into flat earth, before I understood that the earth is flat and got rid of my helio nonsensical beliefs. Um, I believe uh, not in there that we're all a random speck of a big bang and, and that there is no creator. But once you understand what the flat earth is, you're like, crap, there's a creator. And then figuring out your connection to that, what your place is uh, in the system with the creator, that's your own journey. But once you understand there's a creator, then, then you start taking your power back. Then you start realizing what your life is. So how, getting back to your question, how come um, I'm not afraid? Because I'm not afraid. Fear, false evidence appearing real. Fear, okay? It's another acronym. Um, and they, they, they're not, I'm, one, I'm not big enough to, but they can't come after me. That's my belief. You know, if, they, if somebody comes in the room right now and takes me out, well, they're going to get a little resistance. But, um, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to sit on my heels. I know when my day comes, uh, and, you know, if we have that moment at the pearly gates where um, – they're like, you know, look back at your life. I have no regrets. I didn't sit on my hands. I didn't let all of this tyranny that's going on in the world happen. I mean, this tyranny is a cycle. It happens every hundred years and people don't realize it. People have no idea. So you have the belief that your flat earth model, your education, your work is now bigger than you. You need to enlighten the rest of us. That's I, basically I, the answer to the question, right? Well, my, my answer is I don't need to do anything. I'm offering you to show you a whole bunch of doors that you've been blinded. You don't see those doors there. Just like in the Matrix, that hallway with all the doors, people didn't see them until someone goes, look at all these fucking doors. There's shit through them, okay? And, and so I'm pointing at some doors. Don't believe anything I say. Don't believe anything I say. Go verify yourself. Because when I started, I got dragged in, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to prove the globe. Um, and I... Uh, I went to try to prove the globe and disprove flat earth. And, and I was like, holy crap, this shit is real. And once I saw it, I can't unsee it. And it really changed my life for the better. You know, I didn't get into this to feel special, to be different, to, to gain power. I didn't get into it for money. I didn't get into it for any of the reasons. I got into it because I want the truth. I'm a truth seeker, not, an, not a conspiracy theorist. Let me ask you this. So when did you create your model of the flat earth? And what does we, that look like? Yeah, so we don't really have a model, but it's just one quick thing without saying anything because this will be on yeah. YouTube. 1720, there was this thing happened and everybody wore masks and everybody got this. 1820, there was this thing. 1920, there was this thing. Everybody wore shame muzzles and got this and died. And now we have 2020. I don't know, man. I don't I know what's argue going with on. That. That, yeah. That's mostly correct. Yeah. The, yeah. the years mostly line up. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so... So what is my model? So my model is, is this. So, so I didn't make a model and people say, you know, uh, you know, where, where's your map? You know, and I, and I say, mm -hmm. where is your globe map? Right. Where, where, where's your globe map? Because the globe map doesn't work. Right. 
pilots don't. Yeah, there you go. Beautiful. Oh, I'm glad you have that. Is, is you. that a, how old is that? Uh, this is, I believe, this uh, mid 60s. This globe here. Is there a sticker on the bottom of the base underneath? There is not, uh, but it, it mentions no, the USSR. It's Rand McNally. Um, okay. Oh no, I'm sorry, R- right. Rip Logal, 60s. There's no, there's no sticker on the bottom of the base. Uh, there is no, not. It's it's an old one. Okay, yeah. never mind. Um, so here here's a map. This was in all of uh, it was in in all of books and encyclopedias and libraries, and they removed it. They removed it in the, I forget when mid 1900s sometime. They mm. removed this. This is the map of the world. And what, what they did, you know, people say, oh, that uh, the, um, the um, Gleason's map is just the globe being projected, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I say, no, that's not true because the Gleason's map was around long before anyone went up into space to see what the, or supposedly went into space to see what the globe looks like. So how did, how did they know what the globe looks like? You know, in 19, early 1900s, you know, Universal Pictures had a spinning globe and it happened to look just like what NASA did. This is what they did. They just wrapped this over a sphere and then took out huge swaths of ocean and probably land and put us in a prison for our minds. But could we not say that the flat map from what, 1910, 1920 was just someone making a map in 1910? Why do they still use it for navigation today? Do they? Why do all? Yes, they do. And uh, why do why do um why do uh, um why do uh, declassified um, you know NASA manuals and and not that I believe NASA um, FAA manuals and and flight manuals military stuff all talk about a flat non rotating plane a flat non rotating plane does that sound like a sphere but why you got your sphere there let me ask you a question sure. so that line going around the center that's the equator right. And the top half is the northern hemisphere. Correct. And the bottom half is the southern hemisphere, right? Yes. All right. So pick any two locations, any combination of two locations, both in the northern hemisphere. And if you had an airplane, would you ever need to cross the equator to get to get to the location? No, not the northern hemisphere. No. No. And guess what? No flight ever does that. Any flight from any airport in the northern hemisphere to another airport in the northern hemisphere um, never crosses the equator okay interesting right how uh, how about in the southern hemisphere to go to go from any two southern locations from one to the other do you ever cross into the northern hemisphere no yeah well they do okay when we look oh, at I'm sorry uh, southern to northern yes they would no no southern to southern oh okay let we, me see what you have here you shouldn't so here's a southern to southern location and they go all the way up to S- Sengal. And then all the way back down. Why do they cross the equator twice? Look, bam, they stop there and they go there. It's a straight line on a flat earth map. It's ridiculous on a globe. Let's look at another one. Real quick. Let's stop on that one first. Yeah. If we were to go, let's say from Chile, I see you have Santiago, Chile there. Santiago, Chile to Australia, Sydney, Australia. I'm with you. I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to get there. Right. On that flat earth. It's It's a long way. No, no, it's a long flight. It's a very long flight. There is a direct flight and we've addressed it, how, how they do it. Yeah. And it varies like five hours sometimes. And it has to do with the airplanes that fly it. There's only one model airplane. It has seven layers of heat resistant paint, which you really can't find information on anymore. It's only run by a, a half a dozen military pilots. And these planes go faster than they tell us. They go into these jet streams at 40,000, 45,000 feet that are, um, you know, 200 plus mile an hour tailwinds. And it works out perfectly. But the direct flights are often canceled because the winds don't cooperate and they just realize that they can't pull it off. Have you ever tried to take that flight yourself, Dave? No, I haven't. But we had we had a guy get on. We live streamed him at the airport, getting on the plane, flying off until his live stream cut out. We tracked the plane the entire time. He took compass readings the whole way, or not the whole way, because he fell asleep. And then he he logged into the live stream, which we had going for 15 hours, or I forget how long it was. And then he proved that the flight does exist. Great, because a lot of flat earthers said the flight doesn't exist, but it does. But his his um his um flight path with his readings were was very very interesting. So let me let me show you that. I'll switch gears here. So he was going from down here. And he was showing a flight path of northwest, 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 west, right here. This purple line is west. And then he was showing southwest, southwest, south, south, south. Okay. And 
we so we took his readings along the way and we we said okay well he thought he was going to be going south and then popping up over here you know on a globe that's a much shorter flight but it lines up perfectly on a flat earth map how many times does it have to happen where it lines up on a flat earth map and it doesn't work on a globe for people to um to get it and when you when you look at the the flights that normally go to Australia, the ones that have stops, they go all the way up to friggin' North America, then across, and then all the way back down, crossing the equator. But if you track that on a flat Earth map, boom, stop, boom, stop, boom. Okay, it takes like twenty six hours. It's ridiculous. I've got to I, tell you, the scale on this flat Earth I'm seeing now that you've just put up on screen is no. different than the last one. No, it's not. It appears to it, it appears as no, though it not. was. The scale exactly, looks different. Exactly, than exactly the same. Okay. So, here, um, did we look at this one yet? This was Singal. Yeah. Hold on, here's another one. The, and, and so, remind you, there are no northern to northern flights that cross the equator. And now, if you if like if you pick the the longitude or latitude, you know the the the, the, the degrees south this one is, and the degrees south the destination is, it crosses the equator, right? Why? So that would mean in the north, if you had an airport at an at an equal latitude north going to another airport, equal latitude north, it should dip down to the bottom down. It would have to, because it would be the same. But this is the flight route, okay? Only works on a flat earth, okay? Only works on a flat earth. Here's another one, right? Stops in, uh, in um, where is that? Stop in, um, wherever it is, I can't see. LA, it, it's, it, it uh, appears it's, as it's though. It stops in LA. For my right. audio listeners, we're looking at a diagram of, a uh, 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 flight leaving from Lima, Peru, with yep. a layover in LA, leaving to looks like Wellington in the in New Zealand. Yep. But 100%. is that not just a layover day? <laughs> well, it does. Why would it? No. Why would? They, and there's plenty of people that want to go. The plane is filled with people where their final destination is the other destination. Why would they go all the way up here instead of just going right here? It's the same distance. Why would they almost double the distance? And the reason is because this is how the Earth is laid out, let alone airplanes flying over a spinning ball in a space vacuum, which is scientifically impossible. I mean, you have to believe that you're flying upside down and landing on a runway that's moving sideways at a thousand miles an hour when you fly to Ecuador. OK, it, absolute insanity to, to believe this stuff. Here's another one. OK, um, it goes all the way up to Los Angeles again and all the way back down. Plenty of people want to go to Lima, Peru. And then well, another has to be for marketability, Dave. I mean, you can not, say we no, offer no, a stop in LA, we offer a stop in Limo or and, Lima. But here's the thing: there's plenty of people that want to go dire- that that will fill the plane that want to get to their final destination, right? But they don't do it because they can't do it. They can't, right? And and that's the old listen. That's a pre-programmed thing. Oh, airlines have to make money. You know, uh, oh, it's too cold to fly over Antarctica. We're not allowed to. Um, oh, we, 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 need to, we need to go pick up other passengers. That's where our hub is. That's nonsense. That's just brainwashing, right? But here's another thing. If you, if you think that's the case, um, airlines need to make money, sure, okay? But why, when there's an emergency, a medical emergency, when the, why does the plane, you know, on this flight from New York to Hawaii, um, there was a medical emergency and it went over 1,000 miles out of the way and landed in Seattle. Why did it land in Seattle? Well, you happen to look, New York. Oh, Seattle's right on the way, right on the line, right? Well, that could just be a coincidence. Let's look at another one. Do you have a right? flight number on that one, Dave? Uh, I will show you where you can get all that information. Okay. Again, don't believe anything I say. Excellent that there you're asking. Go. Excellent that you're asking. Um, here's another one. Again, it stopped in uh, Moscow. Went like a thousand, over a thousand miles out of the way. Uh, it happens to be right on the, the line to the flat earth map, right? Here's another one, right? Um, this one from uh, Dallas to Beijing stopped in Calgary. Okay, look how far away that is. That's, you know, that's, again, that could be 1,500 miles, but somehow it decided to stop there, right? Well, look at it. It's right on the line. Well, how many times can this happen? Well, the answer is uh, it happened 17 times, but this book right here documented every single thing about it, times, routes, everything. 16 emergency landings, Proving Flat Earth, it's a free PDF online, or you can buy the book on lulu.com because it's a great coffee table book, but it's free online, all documented for you because people are too lazy to go um, check it out themselves. And it's also really hard to find the information anymore, but this book will show you where it is, footnoted, everything you need.
why couldn't it just be wind or something? That's the flight pattern that was approved. I mean, it, it's 17 times out of what? A million flights a year, Dave? No, out of 17 emergency landings, they landed in a spot that is directly on the line from the origin to the destination. And, and, and instead, they went an impossible one or 2,000 miles out of the way to go land somewhere else where the times don't make any sense, where it makes absolutely no sense. Someone's having a heart attack, having a baby, whatever it was. That doesn't make any sense. The winds. What winds are you talking about? You're just making up excuses. Well, it might be the flight pattern that's approved by whatever agency. Stop it. Or stop it. Stop it, dude. Stop international it. International flight you're, agencies. You don't know what they're doing. You know what? I, uh, I, I, <laughs> now the flat earth. How Here, thick I, I gotta, I gotta f- put my cool story, bro. Glasses. On, <laughs> right? All right. We both have them on now. Yeah. They're, they're staying on for the rest of the show because you are just telling cool stories, dude. How thick is the flat earth, Dave? How thick is the flat earth? Well, how, how thick is the earth? How thick is the globe earth? Well, there's certainly a, a, a core in here, right? Is there? <laughs> How do you know there's a core? <laughs> well, we've been told that there's a core. There's science pertaining to us being but what a core. science? What active. science? What science are you talking about? I don't have it, the source information. Well, from me, just I like do. Those I numbers. have it right here. Perfect. No, no, the, I have it right here. So the deepest <laughs> hole ever dug is in Russia. It's called the Great Borehole. Um, it's about seven and a half miles, just short of eight miles. Mm. And while they were digging the hole, they were using ground penetrating radar to see what they're going to hit next. And guess what? Yeah. It was wow. wrong every step of the way. They're like, oh, no more rocks. They hit more rocks. Oh, no more water. They hit water. Okay. It was wrong. So the ground penetrating radar, they should get their money back. And, uh, but it, it gave them nothing. So let's put that if the earth was an apple, they didn't even drill halfway through the skin of the apple. They got the contents of what they were going to drill into wrong the entire way, but somehow they know what the core is 4,000 miles farther. That's called pseudoscience. That's called absolute pseudoscience. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to do that. So they, they couldn't tell you what was in the half of the skin thickness, which is super thin in an apple. And, but somehow they know that there's pits at the core. And, and check this out. There's a molten magnetic core, right. okay? Do you know anything about magnets? You heat a magnet up to the Curie point, which is before it melts, and it loses all its magnetism. So how do we have a magnetic core? And by the way, there was an article that came out yesterday from NASA or scientists that say, we don't have a liquid, ma- we don't have a magnetic core. It's something completely different. They're wrong. They're just changing the science. Like they just changed the science on the whole COVIDus, COVIDus maximus or whatever you want to call it. They did certainly change the science on that. Yeah, they're changing the science. They're making up stories. These are stories. These are absolute total stories. Now, I I have to see that NASA article. You're going to have to send me that. Uh, Just look it up, NASA. You know what? I just had it. Oh, you know what? I'll pull it up right friggin' now. Fantastic. I I can't share it very quickly, but it's um, the article name. I'll just pull it up. I'll just tell you what it is. While you pull it up, I have to hit this real quick. The yeah, Friendly yeah. Neighborhood Video Store of the Parallel Economy. It's ownacopy.com. They provide authentic used physical media, DVDs and CDs. David, you'd love DVDs and CDs. They're flat. Mm. But oftentimes, we're, not a, we're not a disc floating in space. Good try. <laughs> <laughs> and oftentimes better than eBay pricing. When you buy a digital copy, U.S. copyright law and terms of service agreements work against you. You don't really own that digital copy. Stop leasing your media from big tech and the global elites. Ownacopy.com used DVDs and CDs. There we go. We're not a disc floating in space with other round planets. We're Mm. not a disc floating in space with other disc planets. We're not a disc floating in space. Okay. We are at the basement of the, for lack of a better word, universe. And all of the lights we see in the sky are not the cartoons that NASA shows you and Disney shows you. They're lights. They're energetic lights in the sky. What are they? I don't know. They're all named after gods. You tell me. Now, how far away are the stars, Dave? Because they're supposed to be exceptionally far away. Are they as far away in the flat Earth model? Well, how about this? We don't know. But, um, well, let's look at what NASA tells us. So, first of all, um, when you take the time to get a telescope or a super zoom lens and look up at the sky, um, you will see not what, not, what, not what NASA shows you. So if we look up at Mars, this is Mars, okay? This isn't a dusty, dirty ball floating in space reflecting sunlight, a distant sun where it shines brighter than any star. That's absolute and complete and total nonsense, all right? Do you know what the inverse square law of light is? No. I, I didn't, so don't worry about it. Yeah. It's um, 
when something's lit, whether it's a light itself or reflecting light, uh, every time you double the distance to it, it's a quarter of the brightness. Or every time you half the distance, it's four times brighter. It's called the inverse square law of light. It's how light works. Light, you know, if I, if I, if I hit, this was a ball of light and the light expands out to here. Well, that light is much thinner because it has to spread over a bigger area. And it just inversely uh, reduces as it goes out. So they tell us our sun, you know, if this is our sun, how big would the earth be? Tiny little pebble, right? Right. So if I'm on that tiny pebble right here and I had the earth, I had the sun this close to the pebble, if you looked up at the sky, what would you say? I mean, well, that's what, one what? thing that, that perplexes me about the flat earth too, not to change subjects, but if the earth is flat, the sun spins around above the flat earth. Yes. Yes. And the moon is fixed against the sun at 180 degrees. No, no. Absolutely not. Where is the moon? I will show you, but let's go over this first because you're, you're talking about how far the stars are. If the sun was a mile over our head, you looked up, this is what you would say, right? It would fill the entire sky. Agreed? You can't sure. disagree with that. You have to agree well, with that. To but a point. You, 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 well, it would fill, the sun is so big in the heliocentric model that if it was a mile over us and you're not burning up, it's just for model purposes, you oh, would a not mile feel, over, of course. A, yeah, a, a mile, mile over, it would be it would no, no, forget that. It just for I'm um, sizing things. Okay. So you're on a tiny little island in the middle of the ocean. Sure. The sun is it's 12 noon. The sun is a mile over your head. It the sun literally fills the entire sky. And mm -hmm. then you move it. Do you know how far the sun is? It's far. <laughs> I know that. Well, it's well, very far. They tell us it's 93 million miles away. And yeah, I was so say 100 million. Yeah. So if you move, well, very good. If you move it 93 million miles away, it's now the size of a coin held at arm's length. It reduced. Because it's so far away, it got smaller, right? right? Mm -hmm. If I doubled the distance, how much smaller would it get? Think, use your brain. Well, it would get a lot smaller. Some right. people say, some people say half. I'm like, yeah, but it was the entire sky, you know, whatever. So if, if so, if we made it 24 times farther, do you think you could see it? And the answer is, it doesn't matter what you think. No, it's angular. Very good. The angular size is magnitudes too small for our eye to see. Okay, so remember that. You cannot see the sun at 24 times the distance. The sun is eight light minutes away. 24 times eight is three light hours. So at three light hours, the sun is magnitudes too far to see. Just remember that, okay? okay. Polaris, our North Star, which you can see with your naked eye, is 48 times bigger than the sun. So it would have to be 48 times farther than our three light hours for it to be too small to see. Three light hours times 48 is six light days. So it's scientifically provable if Polaris is the size that they tell us, 48 times bigger than our sun, at six light days away, it is magnitudes too small to see. They tell us Polaris is 430 light years away. And at less than a light fucking week, you couldn't see it. So you're asking me how far the stars are. I'm asking you, what are the stars? Okay. And I'm telling you, they're here within the Earth system. Um, here's something. I was going to Hawaii before I was a flat earther. I was flying from California. Uh, no, I was, at, I was going to Australia. Sorry. Sure. I was going to Australia for the Olympics. And we're flying at midnight out of California. I, and I think it was midnight. But I remember we're going to be over the middle of the ocean. No lights around. Um, I was excited to see the sky, the Milky Way, all this stuff. And I looked out. It was like two fucking stars in the sky. It was like two, like two. And they might have been airplanes. I'm not even sure. OK, I couldn't see anything. So we sent a balloon up in, Ara in Arizona. We send up balloons to 120,000 feet. And um, and we, uh, you know, we see a very local sun, if you will. Um, I'm just trying to pull up a quick picture. And the, we, we did one at nighttime and we had the camera um, facing up. This isn't the one. This is during, this is during the day. So sure. we had the camera facing up and we could see all of the Milky Way stars, beautiful, clear night, no clouds in the sky whatsoever. So let me ask you a question. We launched, we launched that up, high def 4K cameras. As it gets higher, are the stars going to get brighter and clearer? Well, I mean, we're talking what? 10 miles up in the air at the most, right? No, you go 20 miles, but okay, so I'm, talking, 20. I'm, talking, I'm talking 30, 40, 50, 60, 80,000 feet. What happens? Are we, is, does the sky get you know, is it less clear or more clear at 80,000 feet? The answer is more clear. 
Okay, because down here we're at the under the thickest amount of atmosphere. On a clear night, you can see stars. On a super clear night, you can see more stars. As you go up, you go up to the top of a mountain, the stars are really clear. But when you when, what happened was when that when that star when that balloon hit 40, 50, 60,000 feet, all of the stars disappeared. Are we sure it's not just a camera issue, Dave? <laughs> I, I mean, got my cool story glow. I got my cool story glasses on because you can make up excuses all day. I'm not making right? up excuses, yeah. Dave. I just yeah. mean this is what you be... see. This is what you see. Is this sun 93 million miles away, or is it right here lighting up this part of the Earth more than this part of the Earth? Okay, this is a local small sun. All right. Oh, so you're saying the sun is local and small? The sun is local and small. Very good. You're getting but, it. But okay. Have you ever been to a dance club, Dave? You've seen a spotlight on a dance floor before, yes? Yeah, I, I know where you're going with this. Go ahead, so, ask the question for the listeners. It rotates around the flat Earth. The sun would illuminate the flat Earth 24 hours a day. All right, can I show you how that doesn't happen? By all means, yeah. Okay. Um, so the sun is close and small. And um, when you've you ever been outside on a cumulus cloud day where there's there's just spread out clouds, really good looking, and they're all kind of sitting there on a deck, right? Maybe they're five or 10,000 feet over your head. But if you look out over the water, I'm here on the water, um, and New York City is about 25 miles away, the, 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 the clouds literally touch the water, right? They literally mm-hmm. touch the water at 25 um, miles away. But I know that they're not really touching the water. They're um, they're they're it's due to perspective okay Mm -hmm. so so when we look i'm trying to (laughs) i'm going all over the place um so one one more thing so perspective perspective all right so here's some street lights we know that they're all at the same height but they kind of go down well here's the sun moving away just like the street lights are moving away and they Mm -hmm. go down this thicker part of the atmosphere becomes opaque and it merges with the horizon. Let me show you how that how that happens. Okay, so all right. So here's my flat Earth kitchen, and my counter decks right here. Yeah, you have uh, a level line, and we're viewing it from a terrestrial point, a celestial point of view. Okay, now moving this line, this sun across the line. Now this could be a city skyline, it could be mountains, or it could just be the atmospheric cloud deck of opacity. I never go below it. And I am level. Now I have a camera on the other side, uh, on the other end of the counter, looking up and watching it. We're going to watch the same thing from a terrestrial point of view. And if I showed you this first, I said, is this line level? You'd say, no, it's going down. And I'd say, is this sun going below this thing that is at my eye level? Even though I'm way below it, you know, on on Earth, it's it's at, at eye level. And now look at this line. This is a level line, but you see it is going down. You can't see this as level because this is your perspective. Well, now let's compare it. Hold on. Let me compare it to a a real sunset. Okay. Real sunset. My sunset. Look where it's going behind. This is the atmospheric deck of opacity right there. But when you zoom out, that merges with this. It just becomes one horizon. And you think it's going below a ball earth. It's just going away. And when when you watch things go away... Um, you can understand how it works. So here is um, here's a, a, a real sunset, okay? A sunrise. It's just mm. coming towards us. We're not spinning towards it at a thousand miles an hour, right? We're not. But it, it is pretty easy to tell that that is a level line, Dave. Your hand is perpendicular to your cabin tree, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. But 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 forget my hand. When you see it in the sky with no reference point. It's just getting smaller, okay? It's just, it's just getting farther and lower. And then the, the, whole, the optics of the sky are no way to prove the shape of the earth. But you have to believe that you are, when you're watching the sunset, that you're falling over backwards faster than the speed of sound, okay? That's not what's happening. The sun is moving away. The sun is just moving away. I want to move on to a local question. Go. Now, I live in northern Maine. Yeah. It's northern lights territory. Yes. How do northern lights work in the flat earth model? So the you know what a toroidal field is? Right? I do not. Okay. Um, let's go back to the, the app for a moment. Okay. So I'm going to hit the images here. This is an image I, I really like. Let's just load for a second here. Um, 
Come on. Oh, there we go. So in my opinion, this is where we live. There's this toroidal field. We live on this dielectric plane right here. And the energies that come out of the, of the center of the earth, which is our North Pole, um, mix with the, the atmosphere and the electricity in the air, and it creates these northern lights, right? Works perfectly on a flat earth. I don't understand how it possibly works on a globe earth, but they just tell us, you know, that, that um, you know, the magnetic field comes out of the center of the earth and wraps around the earth and goes under the earth. That's absolute insanity. Right. It's, it's insanity. So since you don't understand uh, the, the basics of where the sun and the moon are right now, the sun and the moon are opposed to each other. It's close to a full moon, right? The sun sure is, is. <laughs> yeah. well, it is. It happens to be today at the time of this recording. Mm-hmm. We're, we're right at a full moon, right? and they are opposed to each other, okay? But the, the, it's not always a full moon, right? So the sun is the hour hand. Wherever the sun is, it's noon. So right now, it's noon in Sydney, Australia, okay? And it's two hours later on the other end of Australia, and it's midnight over here in America, okay, along this line. And so the sun's coming around. It's bringing its local light with it. I showed you that it's a local light. And if I speed it up, you'll see that the sun is slowly catching up to the moon. And the moon is waning now because it's catching up to it. And it goes around 28 times before it laps the moon. So the position of the moon and the phase of the moon keep track of the weeks and the moons. There used to be 13 moons of 28 days, but they hijacked our calendar. And that's a whole nother discussion. And then it'll lap the sun and the sun will start waxing again. It'll start falling behind. Same thing with the stars. Okay. If I turn on the stars, the stars are spinning fixed in their position and they're going slightly faster than the sun. So slightly though, it takes 365 times around before they lap the sun, which means that right now the sun is in this constellation and it'll slowly drift back into this one for about a month and it'll drift back into this one. Right. We're approaching the um, 18th of the month. You can see that it's right in between the two constellations, just like when they change. They change around, you know, around this time of the month. And and that's how the sun in its zodiac um, work. So how does uh, how does seasons work? This outer yellow line is the Tropic of Cancer, uh, Tropic of Capricorn. And uh, the sun is over that on December 21st. And the inner yellow line is the Tropic of Cancer. Do you know why it's hot in Miami? In June, because the sun is directly over Miami. Look at that. It's directly over Miami. I'm sure it would be very hot. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Because, 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 well, no, 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 no. I meant it's angle, right? Sure. Yeah. It's it's directly over Miami. You can go in Miami on June 21st and and put up a stick and it'll have no shadow at at noon. There'll be no shadow because the sun is directly over it. You can never put a vertical stick where you live. And have there not be a shadow. It'll never happen because the sun doesn't come in that far. So when the sun's in here, this is our inner Arctic northern uh, summer. And and this is because the sun is close, right? Six months later, the sun migrates all the way out to the Tropic of Capricorn. Everything out here is having their summer. We're having our winter because the sun is so friggin' far away. It's far away like those streetlights, the distant streetlight. That's our winter sun. And the one streetlight that we're standing under is our summer sun, right? And that's it. It has nothing to do. The whole tilt of the earth is nonsense because if that was true, you can tilt the earth the other way too. And at sunrise in the summer, it should be arctically freezing, but it's not. Sun shows up on the horizon. Boom. You feel the heat right away. Even though in the matrix heliocentric bullshit model, um, they tell us that the sun in the heliocentric model is three and a half million miles farther away during our summer. All nonsense. Here's the thing. I'm throwing out a ton of fucking information. Most people go, my brain hurts because you were never taught to think. You were always taught to memorize and regurgitate what the Rockefeller textbooks told you. It's a factory model of education. And if you do that, you get an A and then you can go work in corporate America and be a slave your entire life. Now, I have I have two big more what questions, one why question. I want to spend the last 10 minutes of the interview on that app. I want to learn more about that. Now, let's talk a little bit about sunset and sunrise. You just showed us what a sunset and a sunrise look like in a flat earth model. The sun really doesn't set on that app though, does it? It just yeah. keeps spinning around. No, 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 no. This app is, a, is an overhead view of the earth, right? If you want no. to learn about sunsets, 
All you do is you hit the question mark button, which is right here. Mm -hmm. And all of the questions that you'll ever ask are here. And it says, um, there's one, where does the sun go right here? And I click that and up comes a whole bunch of shadow ban videos that Google doesn't want you to see. And you watch these and this shows you where the sun goes. And sometimes the sun just, whoops, sometimes the sun, there's my flat earth kitchen. Look at that. That's the full version of it. Um, Sometimes the sun just fades away, right? Mm. Like in, in this one here, watch this, right? The sun, let me, uh, let me jump forward. Oh, that's not the right one. Well, sometimes the sun will just fade out um, and it doesn't go away. And that's because on a super clear day, you know what? I can show you, um, let me just straight out because this one's worth, this one will, will, will blow your mind a little bit. Sure. So, so sunsets, sunsets. And then we go to sun fade out. All right. So this is one. And it has to be below freezing because there can't be any humidity in the air. So it's below 32 degrees. And that's Fahrenheit. And um, I got my drone up looking west. And the sun's up here. And if we're spinning, the sun goes down, 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 down. And it keeps on spinning. It, from, it was way up here. And in five minutes, it went from there to here. And then it stopped. And it sat here. Now, this is sped up like 2,500%. It just sat here. My friends at the beach saw it set 10 minutes earlier from the bottom up. But look what happened to it. It's light can no longer push through. Okay. <laughs> it's just here it is. It just goes away and it takes flight with it. Light years, light traveling for billions and billions of year, years. Cool story, bro. Light is like a sound. It only goes a certain distance and then it takes its flight with it. Now, people said this is fake. I filmed it seven times. I got the unedited videos. I've got it all. I've live streamed it. And this happens all the time. But people go, I've watched sunsets my whole life. I'm 70 years old. I've never seen one like that. I'm like, have you ever gone out when it's freezing up to 3,000 feet, looked out on a perfectly clear day? That's and exactly watched- my living condition, by the way. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> there, there you go. So, so that's, what happens, uh, that's what happens there. All right. All well, right. a couple more things I have to hit real quick. This is go. one you get every single interview, I'm sure. All Why right. do we always see the same side of the moon? Why do we always see the same face of the moon, the same craters of the moon? Why do we see it? Well, the, the, I mean, saying moon and craters, you know, uh, that's buying into their nonsensical model. If you look up at the moon um, during the day and during the night, during the day, the craters are blue and at night they're black. I don't know. That sounds more transparent to me. But the question is, you know, you're assuming the earth, that the, the moon is a um, is a ball. I'm going to show you four moons. Is this a sphere? Visually from here, yes, it looks like a sphere. Uh, visually, it did look like a sphere. It's half a sphere. How about this well, one? Is this on. one is, it, I know. I give it to you. Is this right. one a sphere? It appears to be. It appears to be. What if I told you it was flat? Is it? Oh, okay. So there's shading on the end. What edge. about this? Is this a sphere? No, I'm going to say that one's not a sphere. Just because I well, know what's that's coming. Because you now. know it's a, it's a freaking <laughs> cup. Right. So, so, so my, my point is, if you can't right. touch it and measure it, you don't know how far it is. You don't know one of those. Um, you can't. You can't prove anything. Are these tables the same width and dimension? Yes, they are. Well, do you, does it look like it? No, it doesn't look like it. But based on you, you, you know it, you know it, you know it because you know that I'm trying to trick you. That's why you know it. Well, but no, it that's a common this- perspective optical illusion. But right, yeah, right. So, so again, again, what what shape are the two middle holes? From here, they appear to be circles that are uh, concave. Are they? Oh wow! Yeah, that's interesting. I, that's a cool. I device. see two. I see two perfect circles. Oh no! Yeah. Now I see diamonds. Yeah, that's 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 cool. I like that okay. device. There. So in can in, in so if you can't touch it or measure it, mm. you know you don't know what's going on. They tell us that the moon is going backwards around the sun, that around the Earth, the Earth is going forwards around the sun. But for some reason, the sun, moon, and stars all rise in the east, set in the west, no matter where you are on Earth. Give me a break. One last quick question for you. I know you talked about karma in the beginning of this interview. Before we talk more about the app, you talked about karma. The Challenger launch, people died. The elites didn't want to kill people because of karma. People died in that Challenger launch, Dave. Did they? (laughs) That was a Tucker Carlson laugh there. So, so NASA mm-hmm. lies about everything. 
Nobody has ever gone up into the space. I call it the space shuttle balloon because it really is just a blimp. No mm-hmm. one is ever on these rockets. Wait a minute. Just, you know, William Shatner just went up on space. You know, he did. Um, yeah, no, he didn't. Um, that is all just a, a, a slight little trick. But let me ask you a question. Do you have any brothers or sisters? No. Oh, you don't. OK, no. Um, if someone has a brother and sister and they pass away, hmm. would you go to their funeral? <laughs> Well, would the brother, like would the, would the brother would, or sister yes. go to the funeral? I would imagine. Let me ask a question. Yes. Are identical twins closer to their siblings? The yes. same? Okay, closer. Okay. Yes. So somehow, somehow, the Challenger astronauts all had identical twins that all have the same name and are all working for universities right now. Oh, come on, Dave. Really? And none of them showed up at their siblings' funeral. Really? No, it's not true. But yes, this is true. <laughs> They're not. Nobody died. Nobody died. I have a playlist. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to add it to the app. That's a good one to add to the app. Um, just showing you, breaking it down. This is they're all deceivers. I mean, if you really want to get into the screw ups on the International Space Station, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's nonstop. It's endless. Look at this guy's head. It's transparent because they're using layers. Right. And they they, sometimes they're floating on on a green screen. Sometimes they're on a zero G plane. But watch this guy's arm. Watch his hand first. It's glitching. But watch this. He moves his arm and he reveals the green screen. Bam. Green screen right there. Why are they using green screens in space? That's not a, oh, you're, that's a freaking green screen, dude. And we've caught them many, many times. Right. And why if are that's they always, real, that did look like a, a green screen. It, from my absolutely. That actually did. That's the first and thing. I've look seen at this today. guy, like, this guy, this guy, these guys are in the foreground, flipping things around, you know, dazzling you flipping their microphone. And this guy goes floating by in the background. I zoomed way in on him. He's way far away just for visual effects. And look, the layer hiding the frigging harness and the wire oh, wow. isn't gone. You can see it. And then the NASA fanboys come well, out. That looked like his belt, although that the way the he NASA was floating, fanboys come out and they say yeah. they use harnesses for safety. Mm. What harness for safety in zero G? I mean, give me a give me a freaking break. Right. Well, that footage was interesting. It, yeah. it, you've got to see this on how about this? Gab TV. This is a ball filled with helium. It's real. Watch right here. Look at that. What is that? This is called augmented reality. Watch. It's not there. It's there. They even put a little beaming Star Trek beaming thing in there. And then she's playing with it. It's called leap motion augmented reality. They're playing with stuff. They're looking at virtual screen screens and they're moving stuff. I didn't even get to the point where that guy floating in the background, the guys in the foreground screwed up and the guy grabbed something, but he missed it and he put it away like he had it. Okay. Uh, nonstop. You catch these guys once and it, it's over. Okay. Yeah, you rebuilding trust once. is an impossible thing to do. And if if, if that green yeah. screen footage is real, that certainly is the most compelling thing I've seen today. And with that, I, I want to go right into the app. By the way, are you on Gab TV, Dave? Am I? I don't know. What's Gab TV? Well, it's it's the uh, video streaming service on Gab.com. You should absolutely join that. People have been requesting for you to join that, I see, on Gab in the Flat Earth communities on that website. So take a look at that. But BitChute, I know you're on there as well. Yes. <laughs> I am. I'm on Brighton. All my stuff is over there. I'm on YouTube. Um, this is one thing that they don't block you from putting up. Like I actually tried to enter. I tried to put up my Infowars um, video. Yeah. I'm like, it got to go off my channel. And I found it on another channel and I uploaded it. And I immediately got a strike. Right. I'm like, yeah. what? I don't, I, like, I don't even remember what we talked about where it was bad. But um, flat earthers, these are the flat earthers in my area. This, this is, is my app right here. Yeah. Yeah. And I could tap on a blue dot and I could message that person. Or right now I have it set for 50 kilometers. So this circle is 50 kilometers. And I could send a group message to 319 people saying, hey, April 2nd, outside of New York City, we're having a meetup um, and come on, come all. And then everyone gets a message and we all meet up using their technology to bring us together because they want to divide and conquer, divide and conquer, divide and conquer. They are desperately afraid, not only of karma, of us coming together and using our mental power against them. That's what they're afraid of. Divide by countries, divide by religions, divide by races, divide by sexes, divide by sports teams, divide, 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 and muzzle and everything else. It's all about conquering us. Right now, um, we just broke 50,000. They were at 51,000. And if you look around the world, you know, this is the UK. Look at this. 
These are just the people that have activated the friend finder on their app. Not even all of the app users. Right. There's this. Look at America. Now, I would be impressed if there are even five users in northern Maine. Why don't we zoom into northern Maine? Northern Maine. Northern Maine. So Maine. Because no one lives here. So where where, where's Maine? Close. Uh, Down south just a bit. Yeah, see, no one lives here. <laughs> That's southern like, Maine. I, I, you're, you're, you're way up here, I'm northern Maine. Up, middle of there, nowhere. There, there's a couple here. What are these guys? Yeah, they might be Canadians. Oh, yeah. There are a few in northern Maine. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and that's because no one lives here. So that means it's a, it's a recognized app. If, look, if there's an, one I'm, user here. I'm an honorary Newfoundlandian, and then we got people in Newfoundland. That's awesome. That's very cool. Very cool. Now, a little bit of fan service. Dave, if you were to bring three albums to a desert island on the flat earth, what three albums would you bring? Musical albums? Yes. Well, uh, for one, my number one album would be would be Flat Earth Man right here. <laughs> I got to okay. have him on the show. Oh, my goodness. That's great. <laughs> Dude, the unbel- his music flat is on. Unbel- his videos are unbelievable. Click this. Great for kids. Great for adults. It'll, it'll stick in your head. And you'll be singing it all day. Okay. Flat Earth Band, I would bring um, probably a combination of uh, the um, Lincoln Park. I'm a Lincoln Park oh, fan. Okay. And, and uh, Pink Floyd. There we go. That's a nice mix. A little yeah. Pink Floyd, a little yeah. Lincoln Park, a little Flat Pink Earth Floyd is, Pink, Pink Floyd is timeless. It is. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about crypto? I know you're talking about you've made this app to decentralize, get the flat earth community away from big tech as much as possible. How do you feel about crypto and other decentralization? I'm a big fan of crypto. And uh, right here in the app under the shopping cart button, uh, two of my favorites are Hex and Epic Cash, right? You want to make money in crypto? You want to get in early? Epic Cash, you can get in very, very early. And uh, what's going on with Pulse Chain? Learn about it. Learn about crypto. If you think crypto is evil, you're um you're you've been brainwashed okay that I can you have agree to with. yeah learn about it right mm-hmm. it's not the market of the beast crypto is coming and if we let them bring their crypto in we're screwed privacy cryptos cryptos that you know this is what bitcoin should have been the, this stuff that's coming out amazing and right here in the app if you want to learn the cheapest and best crypto they'll bring you from zero to hero in just a couple of hours right you can sign up for a lesson right there that's uh that's from jaronism.com jaronism.com slash crypto and uh great stuff and we got a spam call there we go and my last question for you dave just like they did on the actor's studio what are some of your favorite words i'm a comic do you have a favorite flat earth joke to share with us to close the episode a flat earth joke you know well the stupid globe joke that everyone puts it goes if the earth was flat cats would have pushed everything off the edge and that's because <laughs> that's because like you that. You don't know that what the earth is. That's that's mind control right there. Um, here's my joke. If people don't get their heads out of their asses and realize who they are, where they are, and what they are, we're all fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Except that one's not funny, Dave. It's true. That is it's funny because it is true. It's funny because right? it's that's right. That you know what? Things are when you next time you find yourself laughing really hard at something, yeah. ask yourself why you're laughing, and it's because it's true. Right. Well, Dave, it's been an absolute uh, privilege to have you on the program. There's so much more we didn't get to discuss. Hopefully, I can have you back on at some point in the future. David Weiss, his Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, his YouTube channel, D-I-T-R-H. That's also on BitChute and FlatEarthDave.com. Dave, FlatEarthDave.com. Glad- all the links are there. Um, the app's there. The, the My interviews are there. This interview will be there when you, when you post it. And um, Thanks, man. Good conversation. I'm glad I just let you run on with it because I learned a lot and so did my viewership. Thanks, Dave. Take care.